I really like small islands, and chances are, if you're subscribed to my channel, you do too. Last week I talked about a tiny platform that tried to become a country, and this week I'll talk about some small islands that became colonies. Let's get into the video so I can explain more. When I talk about Norway, you probably don't think of it as a world power, at least not in the last thousand years. But while Norway isn't super powerful today, they actually do have some colonies. For example, Norway controls this patch of the Arctic called Svalbard, and they own this island called Jan Mayen. But those aren't the only colonies Norway has. They actually have three possessions in the Antarctic region. When I first heard this, I thought this was very strange, because Norway isn't close at all to Antarctica, and because Norway doesn't even have that many colonies. So why would they choose Antarctica and not somewhere closer to colonize? To answer these questions, we have to look at these three colonies, and I'll explain how they became possessions of Norway. Number 1. Queen Maudland. Queen Maudland is part of Antarctica, and it was actually the first part of Antarctica to ever be sighted, which happened in 1820. There were two Norwegian expeditions on the territory that happened from 1892 to 1894, and it was first claimed in 1911 after Roald Amundsen was the first man to ever reach the South Pole. In 1930, it was given the name of Queen Maudland, named after Queen Maud of Wales. In 1931, 265 whaling ships actually landed during whaling season and caught whales off the coast of the territory. To me, this is very cool because it shows that Norwegians probably don't feel cold. Around this time, Germany had a claim in Antarctica that conflicted with Norway's, but after World War II, they lost that claim. The second Norwegian territory we'll explore is called Peter the First Island. This island was first sighted in 1821 by <clears throat> Fabian Gottlieb von Bellinghausen. He discovered it on behalf of the Russian government and named it after Tsar Peter the Great. In 1910, the French came and confirmed von Bellinghausen's discovery. The first landing on the island happened in 1929, after a Norwegian whaler named Lars Christensen was tired of paying taxes to the British in Antarctica, so he landed on Peter I Island, knowing that if he claimed it for Norway, the taxes he paid for whaling would at least be going to his home country. Also, did you know that because of where Peter the First Island is, the sun technically never sets on the Norwegian Empire? That's pretty cool. The third and final Antarctic territory of Norway is called Bouvet Island. It was discovered in 1793, way before the other territories were. It was discovered by a Frenchman named Jean-Baptiste Charles Bouvet de Loisier. Dang it, why does every person who discovers land in Antarctica have to have a really long and difficult name? Anyway, the Norwegian annexation of the island occurred centuries later, in 1927, and was led by Harald Hornsvet and of course Lars Christensen, the same guy who annexed Peter the First Island. On December 1st of that year, the Norwegian flag was flown and the island was officially claimed for Norway. I think these territories are very cool because Norway's colonies stretch from the North Pole all the way to the South Pole. And out of all the colonial empires, Norway's might be my favorite. Probably because they didn't kill anyone to get their territories. If you want me to do more videos about the colonies of usually non-colonizing countries, such as Denmark, Germany, or even Scotland's failed colony, let me know in the comments. With that said, make sure to subscribe, and I hope all of you have a great day.